to for the first time in forever, the show that aims to fill the gaps in all of our watch lists. Last week, in celebration of the release of Tenet, I took a look at Christopher Nolan's magical masterpiece, The Prestige, and you can check that out by clicking the link in the description below. But this week, things are taking another spooky turn. So beware your television set, lock away any creepy dolls, and make sure there aren't any unwelcome visitors in your pool. This is Poltergeist. Wait! Wait a second. I am going to be talking about spoilers for this film, so consider this your warning now. Also, just another warning, a lot of clips in this video contain scenes of flashing images, and so they may be unsuitable for those with photosensitive epilepsy. In what seems to be a never-ending barrage of horror films that I've yet to see, Poltergeist was one that, even though it had the legendary Steven Spielberg attached to it, it just never really seemed all that interesting. I mean, the whole suburban family whose, whose house gets haunted is a trope that's been done in Hollywood to death, and there was a remake, I think back in 2015, starring Sam Rockwell, that I never got actually around to seeing, but I caught a glimpse of it on TV once, and... Let's just say it didn't really fuel my enthusiasm to go and see the original. But it was actually a mate of mine who suggested, Luke, you, you should you should sit and watch this. It's it's one of the best horror films that he's ever seen. So I, uh, I popped Poltergeist on. And for starters, I'm not going to name my friend because I, I don't want to out them directly in this video. But um, I would just like to address them right now. Why didn't you tell me about the f***ing clown? Okay. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Set in a thriving suburban housing estate, Poltergeist follows the story of the Freeling family, who begin to experience paranormal happenings about their house. Whilst it starts seemingly peaceful, these hauntings quickly take a dangerous turn when the youngest daughter is taken by the demons and the family's lives are thrown into turmoil. Don't think of the clown, don't think of the clown, don't think of the clown! Having been written and produced by Steven Spielberg, directed by the mind behind the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Tobe Hooper, this was a film that kind of brought horror into a completely new light. Spielberg and Hooper do a brilliant job in getting you to emotionally invest in this family. So many horror films nowadays completely forget about building character and just seek to bombard you with scare after scare. Half of what makes horror effective is having that emotional investment towards the characters that you're seeing on screen. And so when they're put in these terrifying situations, because of that investment, you yourself begin to get a bit more scared. And so for Poltergeist, the dynamic between the family feels genuine and heartfelt. You've got the sweet kids that exude that typical Spielbergianness, a mother, played by Jo Beth Williams, doing her best to maintain order in the house, a father played by Mr. Incredible himself, Craig T. Nelson, who is out selling houses and enjoying the football game with his buddies. But all of it seems real. And then, when little Carol Ann becomes transfixed with the television screen, a portal appears to open to another dimension, and supernatural goings-on begin to take over the Freeling household, that's when Spielberg and Hooper take things up to an entirely new level. And by entirely new level, I mean that they crank everything up to the max. Whilst I didn't find Poltergeist inherently scary, it definitely frames horror like a big blockbuster. In fact, given the level of the sensational practical effects and sets in this film, I honestly can't think of another horror film that feels like Poltergeist. As a lover for all things in camera, the practical creations are what really sold the film for me. Watching a nightmarish tree burst through their window in an attempt to swallow a little boy, or as the house faces one final attack from the demons, watching Diane being flung the entire circumference of her bedroom, or most disturbingly of all, a man tearing the flesh from his face, Poltergeist felt expansive, expensive, and dedicated to throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, to take audiences on a wild ride. It's also expertly paced, with really small, tender moments to focus on the characters and flesh out this family even more, 
and then immediately followed by a giant set piece that will set your nerves on edge and as soon as that piece ends we go back to those smaller moments to to to, to learn more about these characters how they're coping with this encompassing situation and thus the cycle continues the ending of poltergeist is also a very clever one after Carol Ann has been rescued and the house supposedly cleansed of demon interference, it looks as if things are wrapping up. The family are packing their belongings and all looks well. Well, that is until the demons make a surprise re-emergence, trying to eviscerate the Freeling family once and for all, and collapse the house in upon itself. It's a brilliantly orchestrated finale boasting sublime technical accomplishments and capping off a supernatural bonanza with one final explosion. Now, I do have a few complaints. For one, the film... It does get a little repetitive at times, especially towards the second act. And through no fault of the film, um, that final twist where you think it's ending and then you get one final set piece at the end, um, I think would have been more effective uh, had it not been for the fact that my dad told me the ending before pushing play on the film. Not that I'm bitter at all. But perhaps my biggest criticism of the film lies in an area I don't think many would expect. The character of Tangina, played by Zelda Rubenstein. Now, whilst I appreciate Spielberg and Hooper casting against conventions for the almost Max von Sydow-like priest to come in at the final moment and save this family, ultimately, it was a risk that didn't pay off. For me, Rubenstein lacked the presence to really make this role her own. For her to stand out as the saviour, but she ended up conflicting against a tone that had already been running throughout the film. Now, um, I would be remiss if, when talking about this film, I didn't mention some of the behind-the-scenes um, conspiracies and, 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 and developments that happened throughout the film. Poltergeist was, and still continues to be referred to as, a cursed film, a cursed production. For Jo Beth Williams, she became convinced that her own house was haunted, due to constant incidents with her household objects moving of their own accord. Zelda Rubenstein had a vision of her dog saying goodbye to her, only for her to be notified of her dog's death hours later. A scene where Robbie is being choked by the clown due to an unfortunate accident on set led to the actor actually struggling to be able to breathe. And perhaps most disturbingly of all, actresses Dominique Dunn and Heather O'Rourke passed away soon after the film's release with Dunn having been attacked by her ex-boyfriend, and Rourke dying of intestinal stenosis at the age of 12. With those notes in mind, it becomes almost impossible not to see the film in a very different and, and largely far more uncomfortable light. So, after watching Poltergeist for the first time in forever, I can safely say that it is worth it. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Poltergeist. Let me know what you thought of the film down in the comments below. As I'm sure some of you are aware, we are currently on the road to 300 subscribers. So if you are watching this video, but you are not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and you will make my day. Here is what you can look forward to next week. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my letterbox are all in the description below. And if you haven't liked the video, what are you, what are you still doing here? <laughs>